Ah, they are already making it. Alright guys, welcome back to day four of the invasion of Rojava by Turkish forces. As we all know, I've been giving a video every day, just giving an update on what's happening in the front line, and today is day four. So, uh, before we get into it, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe. I do these videos every day, and I plan to do them for in the future as well. I'm very clear that I am biased. I am a YPG veteran, so it's it's gonna it's how it is, but I try my best to be unbiased. Uh, but I do appreciate your feedback, uh, the people on the opposing side, uh, giving their thoughts on it. I do appreciate it. I'm going to touch on a couple of those points today, but... We're going to start where we always do, in uh, west of the Euphrates area of Tal Rafat. We just see artillery bombings, nothing new, no movement on the ground. Let's move over to Mambish. There's nothing to say, right? Uh, Mambish, uh, in the northern area, we see heavy clashes between FSA forces and the YPG, with seven fighters from the FSA being killed. And just north of that, in the city of Jerobulus, there's no artillery bombings anymore, but we do see, uh, and I'll quote it, in Jerobulus, a large armored convoy carrying mobile bridges crossed into Syria. And I think, because it's mobile bridges, I would imagine they're trying to cross the Euphrates River, and that might be to actually put some pressure onto Kobani. Because as we look at Kobani, we just see the continuation of artillery strikes on both sides. Maybe they're trying to get the forces from the western part of Euphrates into the eastern part, and attack Kobani with those. Let's look at Kobani now. Kobani, we see uh, some updates, right? First of all, no ground movement, just artillery on both sides, but we do see uh, coalition aircraft all throughout Kobani and south. There's a couple reasons. The first reason is one of the outposts that the U.S. previously held in Kobani was uh, was bombed by Turkish forces, and they're the U.S. coalition aircraft. They're going north of there now to protect those outposts. I would imagine, you know, that that's good that that's happening, but it, you know, the invasion is still happening. So I don't know why the U.S. is just they're sort of. Are, they're half-assing it. Like, are they, are they trying to help the people or are they trying not to? I, I don't get it, but the, the forces are up there. And as we look south, another reason, the second reason for coalition aircraft in the area is because two French service members were hit by a Turkish airstrike near Kobani. Uh, again, that's south. And they were attacked probably uh, while they were in a convoy with some SDF forces. And uh, again, the Turks, they are not, um, they're not afraid of just bombing anything they see right now. Whether that's civilians, whether that's uh, coalition members, whether that's uh, SDF forces, whatever it is, they are just they're just going all out, and they're trying to exploit the move of the U.S. backing out as much as possible. They're trying to put as much pressure on this region as possible, and we're seeing uh, we're seeing actual coalition members getting injured. So I'm gonna be interested to see how France responds to this, how President Macron responds to this. I, I don't know if much of it will happen. Um, if it was KIA, I bet it would be a different story, but they are wounded. We will see in the coming days, and I'll report on it. As we move east, though, we get to the city of Grespi. Not much movement. Nothing else has changed. We just see artillery on both sides, and Grespi is still standing. No, no forces are within the city itself, just in the village outskirts. But east of Grespi, we see a lot of villages being taken. But again, these are small villages. They aren't much. Um, it's not like a giant city. So it's, it's not much of a big deal. But they are moving south to the city of Sula, which is also a, a pretty big city, but it's just not up there on the border. So it's looking like they're trying to push that city, though. But as we look south uh, of, of Gerespi, about 50 kilometers to, this, uh, to the road of M4, which pretty much goes through the entirety of mainland northeast Syria, uh, we see a U.S. convoy that is uh, it's being reported as cut off by Turkish forces. So that U.S. convoy that I was talking about yesterday... That one can't continue down the road because FSA forces have reached it. And that would just result in coalition members being killed by FSA or vice versa. As we look, uh, not quite yet to Sirikani, but in the middle, the FSA forces have pushed through some, just some desert, some small villages, and they have reached that road that I was talking about. They reached it about 12 hours ago, and we see a... Oh, man. Um, I don't want to give the link to the video, but I'll, I'll let you know where you can see it. There is a video of a YPG activist named Hervin Kalaf. She uh, was taken, tied up, put on the side of the road, and shot to death on video. The entire, the entire killing on video. And FSA forces are just unloading into her. One of the guys who took part in her murder was an FSA member who was carrying a dragon up. And he said, record me shooting her with my sniper rifle. So again, I mean, this is what I would expect from a jihadi organization, but it's just awful. 
and I, I hope the coalition uh, can can wake up to this fact that jihadist forces are taking over Java again. In my opinion, again, I'm a YPG soldier. It's uh, that's my bias. But uh, just a couple hours after that, uh, the SDF uh, regained that uh, that road and made sure that they weren't cutting. Uh, civilians off and just killing them. It looks like a couple other civilians were killed and um, That's that's good that the SDF has regained that land, but I mean maybe that's just a rogue unit You know, I don't want to define the entire uh, Organization from the actions of a few this might just be a rogue unit that just booked it for the road Tried to kill as many civilians as possible and then backed off But I did see some comments from uh, the previous videos from people who don't agree with the YPG But they were trying to get my response on what about the the YPG mortars and the artillery that are hitting civilians in uh, in the Turkish area well uh, I, I can give my opinion on it as a US Marine the rules of engagement when a war starts and a war is just breaking out are completely different from the rules of engagement against a guerrilla force so if you are if you are if there is a front line and there is a major battle happening the rules of engagement when considering civilians are going to be much different. It doesn't mean that you can go to a road, stop a vehicle, and kill everybody in it uh, tied up on the on the side of the road like the FSA is doing. But when the aggressor comes in bombing your city and bombing your civilians, and then you're just supposed to sit there and watch it? No. The, they're going to retaliate and they're going to fire where the mortars are. And the FSA, they're firing from a civilian population. They gave no warning to this invasion, just two days. Two days of a warning and they invaded. So this is what happens. I wouldn't criticize the YPG too heavily on their use of mortars against uh, civilian uh, held areas. This is an all out war and we know that Turkish forces are in there. Uh, this is, it happens, it happens. Uh, but as we move to Serikani, we have a couple things. First of all, Turkish airstrikes uh, just south of it. And I wanna talk about that for a second. Uh, I got a report from Havasor that one of their ambulances were hit. One of their members were was injured and a couple civilians were injured. I don't know how that Turkish plane didn't see the clear written letters, Kurdish Red Crescent, on the side of that truck. Um, it's, it's horrific what's happening and the Turks have uh, proved once again for the third time today how much they don't care. They don't care. They're just gonna exploit this as much as possible. And, uh, and even though this is an ambulance that supports the YPG, uh, we're going to destroy it just because it, it supports the YPG. But uh, let's look at Sirikani. Sirikani is still being held. We don't even see any movement within the city itself, just on the outskirts. Uh, heavy, heavy uh, amounts of resistance. And yesterday, as we know, the Turks announced, oh, we we control Sirikani. And the SDF reports, and what I also predicted yesterday, is that, no, you can't clear a city like, uh, that's as big as Sirikani in one day. That's not possible. So that's what we're seeing today. And just continuing of, uh, of fighting and artillery and and just fierce clashes. But as we move a little bit more to the east, we see Kamishlo. It's a bit weird to see this, but we see Syrian aircraft in the same airspace as U.S. aircraft, which are also in the same airspace as Turkish aircraft in the same area. It looks like the Syrian uh, the Syrians are in that area because they were dropping off equipment or something into the airport of Kamishlo that they own. And uh, the coalition aircraft, I think, are just surveying the area, seeing the damage that's being done to the city, um, trying to make sure, uh, keep the, the Turks accountable for their actions as they bomb civilians right now. And uh, as we move to Derek, the last major city, we don't see any movement as of right now. Um, yeah, so <laughs> there's not much to say there, but uh, yeah, we don't see any movement there. I think uh, it also reported about 12 hours ago that there was a Turkish outpost that was destroyed there. That's what I was expecting. Uh, I think Derek is going to be a very heavy resistance. And uh, yeah, Turkish outposts are being destroyed over there. An overview. What has happened today? Uh, again, we see city movements and uh, actual FSA forces reaching mainland Syria and, uh, and trying to cut off uh, main roads, uh, such as M4, that major road going through the middle of it. That's about it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, make sure to share it to your friends. It's very important to, uh, to bring light of what's happening in Syria. And the media is just not doing it. So I'm going to do my best. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you didn't, dislike's fine as well. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs> oh, no. Yo, uh, they are already making it.
Actually, not that bad.